Hello, students. We will continue from the same point where we left at the previous uh, lecture. In the previous lecture, we have derived the uh, amplitude of uh, displacement vector, which was given as a uh, capital X. And we have also seen that the phase lag, that is this particular phi, this is the phase lag with respect to which the amplitude, uh, the displacement vector lags the external excitation vector. So we have derived the equation for both these terms using the graphical approach, which uh, basically is uh, very simple. And uh, the second reason of using the graphical approach is that uh, it is going to help us gain some additional insight into what actually is happening. But for the time being, these are the two equations which we have obtained. And uh, in the next step, we are basically going to simplify them one by one, of course. So we take uh, the term of stiffness out of the first bracket because there is a square over here. Once we take the stiffness term out, it is going to appear in the form of a K square. And uh, if similarly, if we divide the right term by K, because I have a square term over here also, it is going to be uh, a square term over here. And ultimately I can uh, transfer of both these squares outside the brackets. And since I have a under root sign over here, they are going to appear as K. So these steps have been done to obtain the equation which is visible over here. I'm coming the K which appears in the denominator to the numerator part, but that hardly makes any difference. And then the next step, what I will do is that I will simplify what is appearing over here and then what is appearing over here. Uh, some derivations which we have already derived in the previous lectures of uh, undamped, uh, not undamped, damped or free vibrations are also going to be used in, the, uh, in this particular derivation. So the first term, which is m omega squared by k, we simply transfer the k to the bottom, which gives us k by m in the denominator, which basically is a square of the natural frequency. This term is going to appear in the first part of the uh, first term of the denominator. Now let us see how the second term is going to work out, which basically is C omega divided by K. So for reducing this C omega by K, we basically divide it and multiply by CC, which basically is the critical damping. And then we divide and multiply by the term twice of M also. This C divided by CC, in fact, happens to be known as a uh, damping coefficient, which we have derived in the chapter of a uh, damped free vibration. And in that particular derivation, the term of uh, CC, which basically is known as the critical damping, divided by 2M, that is CC by 2M, also was seen that it is basically uh, 2 divided by Wn is square of the natural frequency. No, not this thing, just a moment. Cc by 2m basically comes out to be natural frequency itself. And twice m by k obviously is 2 divided by the square of the natural frequency. This omega appears as it is. And then obviously I cancel out some terms. I cancel out the natural frequency to finally get twice eta omega by omega n. So this term is going to be substituted in the uh, 
and the second term in the denominator. So what I basically get is this expression. And uh, I'm going to make, make one substitution also. I'm going to replace F divided by K by a term known as, uh, by a term known as, uh, just a moment, S T. This is not the static elongation, mind you. This is not the static elongation because for that static equilibrium, I was dividing the stiffness K divided by M. Because this was the static equilibrium. But the present in the present term, I'm dividing force with respect to X, X, T. This gives me the steadily elongation, which I'm representing as X, X, T. Now, as far as this, uh, extension itself is concerned, uh, this uh, force actually happens to be a constant quantity. It basically is the uh, amplitude of the external excitation. It is only the amplitude. So when you divide this amplitude by K, you get a particular displacement and which in fact happens to be the displacement which is going to occur. When uh, this particular force F was static in nature. It was not harmonic, it was static in nature. Under these cases, the equation which I have, I have this particular equation, this basically reduces to uh, the elongation XXT, which basically is the elongation which the system is going to undergo when a force equal to the amplitude of the harmonic force is acting on the system, but is, it is in fact not a harmonic force, it is simply a static force. So we are basically comparing the static force produced by a non-harmonic, uh, we are comparing the static deflection produced by a non-harmonic force okay but the non-harmonic but the non-harmonic force is also of the same magnitude okay kindly remember that the non-harmonic force itself is of the same magnitude given by f of course so we are comparing this static extension with respect to x over here and what is this particular x it is the uh, magnitude of the harmonic displacement. So we are comparing uh, extension produced by a, by a non-harmonic force to the extension produced by a harmonic force represented by this particular X. And of course, the comparison has been made at different frequencies. So this is how this particular equation is going to be interpreted. And then we have one more equation at our disposal, which happens to be the equation which relates uh, the uh, phase lag. And we are going to deal with these similar sort of uh, uh, manipulations as we did for the first equation for uh, displacement. We are going to carry out the similar uh, mathematical manipulations for phase angle also. And let me see how they work out. So this is how the first equation is going to appear. And of course, this equation can be differentiated with respect to omega. This can be differentiated to find the frequency. This can be differentiated to find the frequency to find 
the maximum displacement. Okay, I can simply dis differentiate this particular equation to find a frequency where the displacement x happens to be maximum. And this is what turns out to be. And please note that when the damping is zero, eta itself is going to come out to be zero for which omega p by omega n basically are going to be same thing, which indicates that, the, that for a case of undamped system, when there is no damping present, the maximum amplitude of displacement is going to be obtained when the external frequency, when the external frequency happens to be equal to the natural frequency itself. This is what is going to happen when the system is not damped. It is not damped. But for any other damping, but for any other damping, the maximum displacement is going to occur at a frequency other than the natural frequency. Okay, the maximum displacement is going to occur at a frequency other than the natural frequency. And that is going to be given by this particular relationship. So coming on to the next slide, just a moment. Now we come back to the equation of phase lag for which we simply transfer the K from the denominator to the numerator to give C omega by K in the numerator and this term in the denominator. And we have already derived in the previous derivation when we were uh, doing the mathematical manipulations for the deformation X that the term C omega by K basically is this thing and the denominator is over here. So this is the non-dimensional form of phase lag. And once the phase lag and X, both of them have been expressed in terms of a non-dimensional expression, we basically have the particular solution of the differential equation. But please remember that the complete solution of the differential equation is going to be composed of the complementary term and the particular term. Both these terms are supposed to be added up together to give the actual solution to the post vibration. So this means that the initial values to solve any differential equation, you basically supply a set of initial values. This means that the initial values have to be applied to X and not to XC or XP. They have to be applied to X. That is the complete solution and not the complementary or the particular solution of the problem out of which we have already seen that the complementary solution happens to be a transient solution in terms of the damped frequency of vibration. And XP happens to be a steady state term which oscillates at a frequency given by the frequency of the external excitation. Uh, now this might require some explanation that why this is transient and why this has been termed as a steady state excited, uh, as a steady state response. The thing is that the complementary solution dies out as a function of time. Because it dies out, it has been termed as transient. And as far as the XP, that is the particular solution is concerned, it doesn't dies out. Therefore, it has been termed as steady state. So this is how it is done. 
And the other thing to be noticed is that both these vibrations, both these displacements are occurring at different, different frequencies. The complementary part of the solution is a solution which is uh, which has a frequency omega d, that is the damped natural frequency. And the particular integral part of the solution happens to be a oscillation which is occurring at the frequency given by the frequency of the external excitation. And please note over here that if the damping is absent, okay, if the damping itself is absent, then the transient part of the solution given by Xc is not going to die out. Okay? The transient part of the solution given by Xc is not going to die out. And secondly, the Xc is going to be, is going to have a frequency given by omega n and not omega t because damping is not present. Under that case, the solution itself that is given by X is going to be a periodic function. Of course, it is going to be a periodic function, but it is going to be composed of two simple harmonic functions. It is going to be composed of two simple harmonic functions. The first simple harmonic function is going to have a frequency given by omega n. This is the transient part which is not dying because of damping is not present. And the second part of the solution is going to be composed of omega, which is the external frequency. So this has to be taken care of. The periodic system X is going to be composed of the summation of two harmonics. One of them is going to be at omega n, other is going to be at omega. This is going to be the case when uh, damping is equal to zero. Thank you.